While browsing the web, we often come across loading animations, letting us know that something is happening behind the scenes. Those visual elements, also known as loaders, help transform the waiting time into a smoother and enjoyable experience. In this video, we are rolling up our sleeves to dive into the nuts and bolts of crafting a colorful CSS loader that pulses like audio waves. If you're into front-end development, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on our upcoming tutorials. Let's begin. All right, before we dive into the code, let us set the stage. We have a simple container for the loader, inside which we have five child elements, each representing a bar. And the CSS file is already prepped with the basic styles for the page setup. So, without wasting time, let's get to work on creating today's CSS loader. First things first, we define our loader class as a flex container with the justify content and align items both set to keep the loader perfectly centered. The gap property will add a separation between bars. Let's give it a fixed height for the time being. We will refine this later to accommodate dynamic sizing. Next up, let's focus on the individual bars and give them a background color. Adding equal width and height will create five perfect squares. Then, applying the border radius property will turn them into circles. Now let's work on the CSS magic. We will use the keyframe animation to bring these static circles to life. There will be four steps in this animation sequence. Each will take 25% of the overall time. For the first block, the height will remain the same as before. Starting at 25% of the animation sequence, the second block will turn circles into bars by increasing their height. Then, it will revert to its initial value at 50% and 100% of the animation. The animation will run infinitely while taking two seconds to complete a full cycle. Now, let's spice things up. In addition to adjusting the height, we will play with the background colors. The first state will retain the background as is. Then, it will transition into bright and shiny colors in the second and third states. Finally, the last state will reset to the initial setup. Upon closer inspection of the animation sequence, we notice that the first and last waypoints are exactly the same. As a result, we can group them using a comma separator. Actually, we can remove them entirely since nothing changes in these states. The height and background color remain consistent with the initial values. Therefore, only the 25% and 50% blocks are needed. Currently, all five bars are dancing in sync, but let's shake things up a bit. We can use the animation delay property to add some randomness to their movements. By using the nth child pseudo class, we can target individual elements based on their position in the parent container. For instance, the first bar will have no delay, the second one will be delayed by 0.2 seconds, and the third one will wait for 0.4 seconds before starting its animation. Similarly, the rest of the bars will have their own wait time. If you want to learn more about the nth child pseudo class, feel free to check out our short video for a comprehensive explanation. Since the first child already starts its animation without any delay, which is the default behavior, we can safely remove it from our specifications. Finally, we can harness the power of CSS variables to make our code ready for future updates. What we can do is define a CSS variable for the base size, which will allow us to easily adjust dimensions throughout our code base. For instance, the width, height, and border radius properties can now easily access their values by using the var function. This same variable can be used to maintain consistency in our animation keyframes. Also, we can use the calc function to dynamically calculate the height for the 25% animation block, ensuring it remains proportional to the size. Then, the parent container can also utilize a formula for the gap and the height properties. The gap property in this case is set to half of the size variable, keeping consistent spacing between bars. Similarly, the height of the container is calculated as five times the size variable. We have another short video describing how CSS variables can play their roles to elevate our CSS workflows. With these adjustments, our code becomes even more adaptable to future modifications. We can simply update the size variable and everything else will adjust automatically. To sum up, we have taken a deep dive into creating a dynamic CSS loader that not only enhances user experience, but also showcases the power of CSS variables and keyframe animations. Remember, experimentation is key to mastering front-end development, 
so don't hesitate to play with the code at the link provided in the description. Subscribe to our channel and be sure to check out our other videos to continue expanding your front-end development skills. Thank you for joining us on this journey. See you the next time.